So let's first start with the female external genitalia. So on this diagram, you can see that the female genitals consists of two large labials and then further inside two smaller labias. So we call the large labias labia majora and the small labias labia minora. And at the top of the labia minora you have a small clitoris which looks like a, a small uh, peanut and below that you have the water opening and then comes the vaginal opening. On the outer part of the vaginal opening you have an annular ring which is the hymen. Now a lot of people think the hymen is closed uh, or it have a very small opening. Not at all. The hymen have an opening wide enough to allow menstrual blood to come through but also to allow first intercourse or first insertion of a tampon to pass through with only a minor tear. The size of the hymen ranges from one person to another, from few millimeters, like three millimeters only, very thin, just like the tip of the pencil, or to about one centimeter. Now you can imagine that, that's why most people will have easy first insertion of either male genitals or a tampon without feeling it because it results only in a small tear which is hardly noticed and hardly painful. Some people might have difficulty if the hymen is thick, like one centimeter. So now that we know the genitals from outside, I really recommend that every female as she's growing up to have a mirror and to explore her genital organs, okay? Now, I want to move further up from the outer genitalia into the inner genitalia. So now we're moving from the outer genitals, which we've just seen, now to the inner genitals. Where does the vagina lead to and how big it is? So if you look at a side view of the woman, you can see that the vaginal opening is quite long. It ranges to anything from seven to 10 centimeters. So it's quite long. It's also wrinkly. So in fact, it can stretch if you try to stretch it either by a male organ, it doesn't really matter about the size, or by a baby's head or a whole baby's body, which will pass eventually through the vaginal canal. Now that then will lead into the neck of the womb, which has a very small hole inside. Now you can see from the diagram that the neck of the womb, only really uh, half of it projects into the top of the vagina. The other half is a continuity of the uterus. It goes upright to the uterus, but it's inside the abdomen. But the vagina really is blind ended. So don't worry at all that any object is going to reach the inner part of your tummy. The vagina is quite stretchable and can even stretch right as far as just below the belly button from inside. And then it leads to the uterus. The uterus is well protected inside the abdomen. Now, so the vagina leads into a canal, that's we call that the cervical canal. And then you have the uterine cavity where babies implant and then you have a small hole inside the uterus at the top only one millimeter in size which leads into the fallopian tube so now we look into another view of the female genital organs from inside So this is a front view of the internal organs from inside. And you can see the vaginal wall is a bright, the vagina is a blind aided organs. And this is the cervical canal. And now you can see the uterus and the tubes, very small opening and it leads to the tube. The tubes are also within the abdomen. And then the tube ends up in a something uh, we call fimbri or ampulla, which is uh, like a little trumpet 
and the opening is much wider here and it's very close to the ovary so the ovary is a separate organ attach it to the uterus by a ligament and attach it by some sort of tissue into the tube and this is the female organs so most of the organs are all inside the uterus the only accessible part during intercourse or during examination is the vagina and the cervix.